Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I'm sure the whole House will join me in congratulating the Prime Minister and his partner on the news that they're expecting a baby. And I also join the Prime Minister in wishing the people of Salisbury well. It's a wonderful city. I've visited it many times. And, of course, what happened to them was utterly appalling, and their safety and security is paramount for all of us. I also want to pay tribute to all the medical staff and, indeed, expert public servants here and overseas who are doing the vital work to combat the spread of coronavirus and looking after those affected. Yesterday, our part-time Prime Minister finally, finally, finally published the steps that his government will take to tackle the outbreak of the disease, and the strategy broadly has our support. But a decade of Tory austerity means, means our National Health Service is already struggling to cope. Bed occupancy levels are at 94 per cent, and hundreds of our most vulnerable people are being treated on trolleys in corridors. What additional funding will our overstretched and underfunded NHS be given to deal with this crisis? Uh, well, Mr Speaker, as the Right Honourable Gentleman knows, uh, this Government has put in record funding into the NHS, uh, and uh, we pledge that we will give them everything uh, they need to cope with the crisis. Uh, I think it might be for the advantage of the Right Honourable Gentleman and the House if I update the House on uh, where we are with the coronavirus outbreak. And uh, as yesterday's plan made clear, uh, we are not at the point yet where we are asking large numbers of people to self-isolate, but uh, that of course may come if large numbers of people have the symptoms of coronavirus. And if they stay at home, the House will understand that they are helping to protect all of us by slowing the spread of the virus. And that's what the best scientific evidence tells us. If they stay at home, and if we ask people to self-isolate, uh, they may lose out financially. So I can today announce that the Health Secretary will bring forward, as part of our emergency coronavirus legislation, measures to allow the payment of statutory sick pay from the very first day you were sick instead of four days under the current rules. And I think that's the right way forward. Nobody uh, should be, be penalised, Mr Speaker, for doing the right thing. Mr Speaker, I thank the Prime Minister for that, but I want to ask him a couple of more questions on this subject. Is it, is it true, as has been reported, that police forces are likely to become so overstretched by coronavirus that 999 response times will have to be extended and that even investigations into some murders will have to be halted as a result of this? Well, well, Mr Speaker, we are not at uh, that stage or anything like that stage yet. Uh, our, our police forces, he knows, uh, our police forces are well able to cope with all types of eventualities and uh, they have long-standing arrangements to prepare them for such pressures. Mr Speaker, under this government, there are two million workers on low pay, many of them women in the care sector, who are not eligible for statutory sick pay at the present time. The Prime Minister's statement just now does not, it's not clear whether it covers them or not. And those on Social Security could face sanctions if they miss appointments, and therefore they and their families will face terrible hardship. When the Prime Minister brings forward the emergency legislation, will he guarantee that workers' right to sick pay from day one, as he's just indicated, will apply on statutory sick pay, will apply to all claimants and those people that are not currently eligible for statutory sick pay, therefore will have to make a terrible choice between health and hardship? Well, uh, the, the Right Honourable Gentleman is raising a, a very important point, and of course we are very much aware of the issues faced by the self-employed on those on, on zero-hours contracts. I should stress that some of them uh, will be entitled to statutory sick pay, others, uh, a, great, a great many, others will be entitled to help through the existing system such as universal credit. And we are... 
we are urgently we are urgently looking at the application process to reflect on the advice on self isolation but i, I, I you know I, I think the the members of the public have appreciated the way uh, hitherto that I think that members have come together across the floor of this House to deal with this crisis. And I think it would be common ground between us all that we want to do everything we can to avoid penalising those who are doing the right thing. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister is not being clear about this. The reality is, if you're on universal credit or just put onto it, you've got a five-week wait before you get any benefits. Will he be absolutely clear that nobody, nobody will have to choose between health and hardship? Because it's a matter of public health concern for everybody. Our, Mr Speaker, our part-time Prime Minister... ...failed to turn up on Monday failed to turn up on Monday to answer a question about a breach of the Ministerial Code. In his own foreword to that code, the Prime Minister wrote, there must be no bullying and no harassment. Will he now commit to an independent investigation into the Home Secretary's conduct, led by an external lawyer, and commit to a date when its findings will be made public? Uh, Mr Speaker, of course though, it's right that uh, there should be an investigation into any allegations of bullying, and that's what the Cabinet Office is doing, and that's what Sir Alex Allen will of course be doing. But I just remind him, since he mentions uh, the Home Secretary, that she is keeping this country safe yeah. by putting in record numbers of police officers. She believes in stopping the early release of offenders, and she's, a, she's bringing in a system to tackle our migration crisis with an Australian-style points-based system. Yeah. He would scrap he would scrap, stop and search. Uh, he, he believes in getting rid of our security services and he certainly wouldn't uh, tackle our immigration system, Mr Speaker. Jeremy Corbyn. It's about whether he will release the findings of an investigation into the Home Secretary's behaviour. I repeat to him, a government cannot be judge and jury over its own conduct. There has to be an independent element to that investigation. Overnight, Mr Speaker, further allegations have emerged that the Home Secretary repeatedly harassed and humiliated her private secretary while she ran the Department for International Development. If this is true, this suggests a shocking and unacceptable pattern of behaviour across three government departments. On each occasion, tens of thousands of pounds of hard-earned taxpayers' money has been spaffed up the wall to buy their silence. Was the Prime Minister aware of these allegations? And if he was, why did he appoint her? Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I really repeat the point I just made. The Home Secretary is doing an outstanding job. I have every, I have every confidence in her. Uh, if, if there are allegations, of course it is right that they should be properly investigated by the Cabinet Office, and that is what is happening. But I take no lessons about bullying, Mr Speaker. Where female MPs were bullied so badly in the matter of anti semitism they actually left the party, and where, and where the Shadow Chancellor has still not apologised for his call for a member of our party to be lynched. Yeah. 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 The Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister said, if there are allegations, is he completely unaware of all the allegations that have been made over the last few days? Is he completely unaware of the resignation of a permanent secretary because of his treatment by the Home Secretary? Mr Speaker, we have a part-time Prime Minister who barely turns up but is determined to cover up for bullies in his government. There can't be one rule for workers across this country and another one for him and his ministers. When his Home Secretary has been accused of repeated bullying and harassment, leading to hard-working staff attempting suicide by overdose, he gave her his full support. How can the people of this country have faith in a Prime Minister who can't be bothered to turn up and, when he does, has no shame in defending bullying in his own government? Uh, well, 
Mr. Speaker, that is the, the question from a, a, uh, a full-time neo-Marxist who's, <laughs> who's, who's, who's failed to stamp out bullying in his own party. And actually, I'm, I'm very proud, as I say, of the record uh, of this government just over the last 82 days. Uh, we've uh, taken back control of our borders, our laws and our money. We've got Brexit done. Uh, we've set out a new, a new points-based immigration system. We've put more money into people's pockets through the biggest ever increase in the living wage. Uh, we've guaranteed more funding for schools by increasing the minimum funding uh, for, uh, for, for every pupil. We've restored the nurses' bursary, introduced a bill to set in a record cash boost for our NHS and ensure there will be a free hospital car parking for everybody who attends a hospital. And we're delivering gigabit broadband to the entire country. That's just to say nothing of the police that we're recruiting, Mr. Speaker. That's just in the last 82 days. We're getting on with delivering the people's priorities. Yeah.